Hi, my name is Ali Shesavar from Breacher Digital. In this video, we're going to discuss the output capacitance of a power supply and how we can mix ceramic capacitors and electrolytic capacitors and what combinations and ratios in order to achieve our objectives of having enough damping, enough bulk capacitance and also minimize the output ripple. So uh, if we consider we have a buck converter what is happening here is that this switch is turning on and off and we are getting a switched waveform going this way and this LC filter is effectively filtering out the switching ripple uh, in order to give us a DC output. Um, but this filter is obviously not perfect and what will happen is that some ripple on the output will still exist. Now the choice is how we choose this capacitance, how many of them, what size and what types. Now in the old days before ceramic capacitors had very large values and became affordable you used to have just electrolytic capacitors and you used to have lots of them. Um, then what people used to do was to add some a small amount of ceramic capacitance. So for example here you would have let's say 220 microfarads of electrolytic capacitors right and here typically magic number 100 nanofarads of ceramic. Now the question is how do these combination of capacitances actually work in terms of our ripple and our control loop. Now the electrolytic capacitor has got a certain amount of ESR, that is the equivalent series resistance, um, and a ceramic capacitor at higher frequencies has got very very low ESR. So the, the first question to ask is if you have got 220 microfarads of uh, um, electrolytic and 100 nanofarads, only 100 nanofarads of ceramic, will these two work well in terms of reducing the ripple and the answer is no they don't but the, what is going on here is that even though this has got very little ESR at high frequencies the uh, impedance of this is extremely high so the majority of the current is going down here instead of down there so you need to be a bit uh, careful about which sizes you choose and in order to do that we need to understand why we are actually doing this. We are actually trying to achieve two objectives, right? At the crossover frequency, we are trying to have a little bit of damping. We would like a little bit of ESR at the crossover frequency because that will give us an ESR zero. It damps things and it, and it helps us to stabilize the, uh, the control loop um, easier. Um, at the switching frequency, we would like to have enough ceramic capacitance in order to minimize the ripple because the majority of the ripple is due to the ESR and if you have enough ceramic capacitance, 100 nanofarad is not enough in most cases, the, the, the ESR, the total ESR at the switching frequency is very very low and therefore the ripple is minimized. So you need to work out what combination of these two will work. But also you would like to have some bulk capacitance so that if you have a massive step load, there is enough energy stored in the capacitors and that is usually the job of the electrolytics. So we are going to measure a 220 microfarad electrolytic, we're going to measure 100 nanofarad ceramic and then we're going to show that actually this 100 nanofarad capacitance, which is very common that people sold their own like decoupling capacitors and so, actually does not help you either for switching ripple reduction or for helping you in terms of the uh, stabilization of the control loop. Now, if you're going to use different capacitors, let's say we're going to use 22 microfarads or 44 microfarads of capacitance, then that will be a little bit more realistic. However, now you've got the complex impedance of these two that are acting together. 
and calculating that mathematically is quite difficult and the best way of doing that is to actually measure it um, uh, because all of the terms including the parasitic resistances are frequency dependent. So what we're going to do next is we're going to also use, show this combination, we're going to use a body 100 to measure all of these and we're going to add an electrolytic with a 100 nanofarad ceramic and then an electrolytic with a, uh, a larger perhaps 440 microfarad ceramic and see how this impacts and discuss what is the best point whereby we get nice amount of ESR at the crossover frequency for loop purposes and near zero ESR at switching frequency to minimize the ripple. So we're going to go now to the lab and I'm going to show you how this all works out. Okay, so the first one that we're going to try is a uh, 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor uh, and I'm going to put that um, into BWIC and I'm going to measure it with the body 100 and then wait for the curve to redraw and this is a classic shape of the impedance of the an electrolytic capacitor you can see that it is capacitive up to around this point here and then at this point here it becomes resistive because it's not changing very much and then above a few megahertz then it starts becoming inductive because the impedance is going up the important plot is actually over here. You can see that the ESR of this capacitor is relatively constant from around 1 kilohertz to 10, 10 megahertz. Now, the, for loop design, if we assume that your crossover frequency is uh, at 10 kilohertz, the ESR zero, um, you need to, for the measurement of the ESR zero calculation of it, you need to work out the ESR of the capacitor at 10 kilohertz. Um, which in our case is around 200 milli ohms. Right? That is for loop design. L if you are switching at, I don't know, 100 kilohertz, you can still see that it's around 200 milli ohms. And if you had one amp of peak to peak ripple, you would end up with 200 millivolts of ripple on the output. It would be nice to reduce this. So ideally, what we would like is 200 milli ohms of. ESR around 10 kilohertz, but you'd like this curve to come down so by the time it gets to the switching frequency it's lower and therefore our switching ripple becomes a lot smaller. Now as I said earlier many people put a um, 220 microfarad or a big uh, electrolytic capacitor in parallel with let's say a hundred nano uh, farads of ceramic and that I will show you in a moment that it will not help you very much. So first uh, let me save this curve so that we can have a look at it later okay so I'm gonna refresh I'm gonna refresh that let's display it so the green trace as you see now is the electrolytic now I'm going to put in the 100 nano uh, ceramic okay Now you can see here, let me optimize this. On the impedance plot, you can see that the ceramic is acting very beautifully as a capacitor up to around 25 megahertz, and then that's the resonance, and then it becomes inductive, so it's a much nicer capacitance. Um, however, look at the ESR. The ESR of this capacitor is absolutely huge. This is the blue trace compared to the ESR of the electrolytic which is absolutely tiny uh, at low frequencies. If I change the scale a bit, you can see, right? So if at 10 kilohertz, you can see that the ceramic is not actually helping you very much in terms of the ESR. And these two are in parallel now. So if I put this one in parallel, this is how, what people do on, on circuits. And we'll see how this will impact the overall impedance. So I'm now putting 100 nanofarads in parallel with 200 20 microfarads. The nanofarads is in ceramics, the microfarad is electrolytic, and we will see that this actually is not going to help you very much on up to very high frequencies. Okay, so there we go. That's it. So the yellow trace was the 100 nanofarad on its own, the green trace was the electrolytic on its own. Now you can see the 
uh, the red trace is the electrolytic in parallel with the 100 nanofat. And you can see that the electrolytic is actually the, 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 the parallel combination up to this point, up to 2 megahertz, is actually superimposed. You can see if I turn it off and on, it is superimposed on the electrolytic. So the ceramic is doing absolutely nothing until around 2 megahertz. At 2 megahertz, it starts to have some impact. And you can see that at that point, the impedance starts to fall. And also, if you look at the ESR of the resistance, you can see that it only becomes low at around 10 megahertz. This is that, that area over here. However, your switching frequency is in hundreds of kilohertz. In hundreds of kilohertz, the dominant ESR is that of the electrolytic and not the 100 nanofarad uh, ceramic. So the, the ceramic is helping you uh, uh, for some high frequency no reduction, noise reduction, perhaps for EMC purposes and so on, above 10 megahertz. But really, for the power supply part, it's not, not helping you for loop design and it's not helping you for output ripple voltage reduction either. Okay? So we need to find a, a, a different combination. Now, if I take, okay, let me take these two out. And now, let us look at 42 microfarads. So that is 222 microfarad ceramics in parallel with each other. So if I put that in, optimize, you can see that the, uh, again, it is capacitive up to a few uh, hundreds of kilohertz, up to about 800 kilohertz. Then there's your resonance, and then, and then it starts going back up like an inductor. However, the ESR is extremely low all the way along. In particular, let me change the scale a bit. You can see from the cursor here that at around 10 kilohertz, the ESR is very, very low. It's less than 5 milliohms. The ESR of the capacitor was, uh, of the electrolytic was quite high at around 200. That's a combination of these two is what you need. The effective value of these two is what you need for loop design. At switching frequency of 100 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz, you want to see how, what is the combination value of the ESR of the ceramic plus the ESR of the electrolytic. Okay, so I'm going to save this into the ceramic value and I'm going to display it. Okay, let us turn off the 100 nanofarad. So here now we have got just the electrolytic and just the 44 microfarads of ceramic. So now I am going to put my electrolytic in parallel with my 44 microfarads of ceramic. So I've got 220 microfarads of electrolytic in parallel with 44 microfarads of ceramic. Now that is a good combination and you will now see that we're going to get the best of both worlds in that we're going to have some ESR at around 10 kilohertz because we want that. That is that that is makes our life easier in terms of loop design. We've got bulk capacitance at low frequency. So if there's a massive load of step, there's enough energy stored to feed the load. And at high frequencies, around switching frequency now, the ceramics come into action and they start reducing the voltage level. So let me put these two together. Okay. So now, the green trace here is the impedance of the electrolytic. The blue trace on its own. The blue trace is the impedance of the ceramic on its own. And the red trace is the combination of the electrolytic plus the ceramic. Uh, you can see that we have got much better impedance uh, compared to that of the electrolytic on its own because the electrolytic one flattens out because of the massive ESR. So we've got the best of both worlds in terms of high uh, capacitance, amount of capacitance at low frequencies for bulk purposes and it's going down and if you look at the ESR now, let me take this off. Okay, you can see that at 10 kilohertz, I have got 120 milliohms of 
ESR. That is a good thing. So I've got damping for my loop purposes. Uh, the, uh, if you remember, the uh, electrolytic on its own was more like 200 milliohms. So I've still got a nice amount of ESR. That is a good thing. But look at what's happening at the ESR at near the switching frequencies. In the hundreds of kilohertz region, the ESR is near zero. And that means that the ripple is going to be very, very little on the output. An electrolytic on its own would have had, as we worked out, would have, would have had an, about 200 milliohms of ESR, which would give you a massive amount of ripple. So in, by this combination, we have managed to get the best of all worlds in terms of designing a very nice output filter for the uh, power supply. Um, the question is, can you really calculate it? Quite possibly with a lot of analysis, uh, but because all of these, these variables, are, are the, all of these parameters of, of, of varying with frequency, the easiest and the quickest is actually doing it like so on the, on, on, with the Bode 100 and, and working out what is the nicest combination for your power supply so that you get the nice amount of bulk, nice amount of ESR at crossover frequency and very, very low ESR at switching frequency to reduce the ripple. Thank you for watching and hope to see you at one of our workshops.